Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Uh, I would like to continue uh, talking about the concept of mechanical work. Um, and uh, this lecture is about so-called golden rule of mechanics. Well, it's obviously a catchy name. Um, it, it's all about work, basically. And uh, the previous lecture where I introduced the concept of work and defined it basically for certain cases, um, this is the foundation right now, it's kind of a repetition and uh, one particular very important property of the work, which is called golden rule, um, will be just illustrated uh, in a few examples. Uh, now this lecture is part of the course Physics 14, 14 presented on unisor.com. I suggest you to, to go to use this uh, website unisor.com because not only all the lectures are properly um, comprised into, um, into a course with corresponding menu, um, parts, chapters, uh, sub-chapters, whatever you call it. Um, and also every lecture has very important uh, and detailed notes, um, which you can just read as a textbook. Uh, plus there are exams for those who would like to be challenged. And uh, the site is completely free, there are no advertisements. So basically I do suggest you to use the site and the menu. You go to Physics 14 course, then Mechanics, and in this particular case go to, to the work uh, chapter, and then you will find this lecture. Okay, so let's consider um, whatever we were talking about in the previous lecture. I was defining the concept of work. Um, and uh, I will um, do basically a repetition, more or less, and I will emphasize this so-called golden rule in every case. So my first case was um, when you have a, a straight line movement of an object and you have the force, a constant force, which is basically accelerating this object along its straight line trajectory. Now, we have derived a very important formula that if you start um, acting with this force at a certain point where the object is at rest and then you finish it at a certain point where the object has developed the speed uh, v, so, act, so your force is acting on this distance s and the force is f and the mass is m then f times s is equal to mv squared over 2. Now, what I would like to emphasize here that the purpose of acting of this force is to develop certain speed. It's like you're starting the car, you're pressing the gas pedal, you're accelerating. As, so, uh, as soon as you reach certain speed, you basically uh, just maintain this speed. Um, so this uh, segment of, uh, of this straight line acceleration uh, is related to the force uh, which pushes the car forward and it's related to the um, final speed uh, which you have achieved during this acceleration period. Now what's important is that this speed V depends on the product F times S the force times the distance and that's what we have called W, which is work. Now, what is the golden rule of mechanics in this particular case? Well, the golden rule is that you have to preserve F times S if you would like to achieve certain speed V. Which means you can increase the force but, but by, by certain ratio, but then you can actually achieve your speed by the correspondingly shorter distance. Or vice versa, you can decrease the, speed, uh, the force and increase the distance, and the result will be the same. So it's the result which is important, the final speed V. And what's the golden rule? If you are, well, losing, let's say, in, 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 uh, in, in force, which means you have to really Exhort, exhort more efforts, all right? You have to use the bigger engine. Then you can win in distance, which means you can achieve the same goal in a shorter distance. 
or alternatively if you would like to win uh, if you would like to lose for instance in distance by winning in force so you can spend a little bit less efforts but then you will lose um, in uh, distance because you will have to um, go for a longer um, distance to achieve the same um, the same speed the same final goal why you are actually applying the force so again lose the force win the, the distance lose the distance win the force that's basically the golden rule you always have to preserve this product and that's what basically this golden rule is all about my next um, example is very much like this one and it, again it was exactly the next example in the previous lecture where I uh, was talking about slightly more um, general uh, character of the movement what if your force acts at the angle and my example was for instance you have a toy train on the track and the child is basically pulling with with a with a rope or a thread uh with a little bit uh with with a, with an angle towards the track then uh, the difference between this and this is uh, only that instead of f you have to put f times cosine phi where this is phi because this is projection to this force this is uh, another component so this force is represented as sum of these two and this one is basically uh, balanced by reaction of the track right so it's this piece which is f times cosine of phi should be um, substituted in this now phi is a constant obviously because the child is moving also the same way as the train is moving uh, along the tracks so again you have f times s being a constant so again which means you can basically win in the force by applying it a little bit less but then you will have to move for a longer distance you will lose in the distance or you can win in the distance have it uh, a shorter uh, but then uh, you will lose the force because you have to apply more force same golden rule of mechanics now my next example was and again I will illustrate it exactly the same way as in the previous lecture if your purpose is to lift above the ground level by the height h certain object by pulling it up with the force f now if this is the distance s and the object has a weight p what we came up with is that the f times s is equal to p times h Again, that was my third example in the previous lecture. What does it mean exactly the same as before? You can use um, a weaker force. Uh, let's say you have a slope like this. It's easier to move up this slope than this slope. Why? Because F should be equal to P times sine phi that's how I would to, to basically smoothly move without acceleration obviously you need uh, to have this force equal to uh, to P times sine of this angle so if the angle is smaller the force can be smaller because the angle will be smaller and the sine will be smaller however my s which is equal to h divided by sine of phi would be longer so that's why the product regardless of the angle phi the product f times s will be always p times h the weight times um, times the height so again you are decreasing this angle you will win the force because you can apply smaller force but you will lose in distance because the distance will be longer and vice versa if you want to apply a 
stronger force, a, 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 a bigger force, whatever, um, you are, uh, you, you basically lose in efforts because you have to exhort more efforts, but you will win in distance because this one is shorter than this one. So again, win in this, lose in that. Win in that, lose in this. Same thing, golden rule. Now my last example is, now by the way, what was the purpose of this particular uh, example which I was just talking about with the uh, inclined? Well, the purpose was to lift the object to the height h. So, and that is the purpose and it requires certain amount of work. That's it. Doesn't matter how. Um, more uh, uh, steep sloped, slope will require stronger force on a shorter distance. It's a less steep slope, it will require um, less of the force but longer the distance. But it's the product which is important and the product is the work. So the purpose is height and the amount of work is W and they are related. Force and distance can vary as long as their product is the same. Now, and the same kind of a concept which I did not really talk about in the previous lecture, but I think it's kind of important. If you have uh, a lever where you would like to basically lift this particular uh, weight. Now, the, uh, the, the regular thing is, this should be shorter, right? This is LP. Now, this is the force. Well, I shouldn't really put the force this way. I should put it perpendicularly. Okay, apply force F. Now this is LF. So this arm is LF and this arm is LP. And uh, what we can uh, say basically that uh, you always have to um, apply the force which is balanced by by the weight um, and that's the minimum actually force which you should really apply um, now um, if you are pushing vertically down and this is vertically down and if this is some kind of an angle phi then obviously the force which is perpendicular to this uh, to this arm uh, which is basically the force which rotates it right um, it's uh, equal to what um, so this is phi so uh, what else is phi between this and this this is phi right and this is phi so the force F uh, perpendicular, let's call it FP, and this is just F. The force perpendicular would be, uh, would be equal to F times uh, uh, what? Cosine phi. Same thing here. You have P, uh, you have P and you have P perpendicular, which is equal to P times cosine phi. Now, what's important is that if you compare these two forces, FP and PP, which is perpendicular forces to the arm, you always have to have the balance between the moments of uh, these forces. Because this is how uh, um, uh, equilibrium in rotational mo mo motion actually can, can be reached which means FP times um, L force times this, this times this, should be equal to uh, PP times LP, right? Now, since FP and PP are nothing but F times cosine phi, and this is P times cosine phi and L. 
we have this equation where cosine fine is going out and we have the most important equation in this particular case now what does it mean well that's basically means exactly the same as before um, we probably should use the concept of work, but concept of work is related to force and the distance it's, it's applied to, right? So if we are moving with certain, during the certain distance to lift up this thing, and let's say again, the distance is, 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 is phi, then the S uh, phi, S, uh, S, S phi is equal to times L F times angle right so if we are moving from this position to the horizontal position to lift up our weight we have to move it by angle Phi and the length of the um, um, arc which we are actually moving on this side would be equal to SF which is radius times phi and on the right side um, we will have uh, times SP which is equal to uh, P times LP times the same angle phi which means that if alpha F times LF is equal to uh, P times SP then F times SF, which is by phi greater, would be equal to P times S, SP, which is also by the same phi equal. So we have an equation uh, F times S, F is equal to P times uh, SP. Now, this is the purpose. We have to lift by certain distance along the arc. And this is the work, basically, right? Well, more precisely, the work is FP. But what my point is in this particular case, that FP is probably by factor different from F, and PP is by factor uh, different from, uh, from the P. So the equation is still the same. And since the equation is still the same, we have exactly the same principle here. Because this is the constant, this is the purpose we would like to achieve. And this is the work which we have to spend to achieve this. We have to perform, not spend, perform to achieve this goal. And again, you can reduce the force, but you can have a longer arm. Then it will give you longer uh, distance this force is acting upon right and you will achieve exactly the same result so you can win in the force but you will lose in the distance or again you can win in the distance have a shorter uh, lever but then you have to apply greater force to achieve the same result because it's the product which is important the work which is important again the golden rule win in one lose in another win in this lose in that so, basically, my point was for this all these uh, uh, examples, which I have um, considered basically again more or less the same as before, to show that a concept of work is extremely important in mechanics and it's related to the goal, to the result, to the purpose. If you would like to achieve certain purpose, then you have to perform some work nothing comes for free <laughs> that's what it is actually um, and uh, again how you spend how you perform this work is uh, in most cases kind of irrelevant now in this case for instance we are not talking about you move down and then up and then down and then up again to achieve the same goal no that would be waste right we're talking about more kind of a normal situation so you would like to lift it up 
push it down. That's it. I mean, some simple case. In these simple cases where there are no waste or something like this, you have to you have to perform certain work, and that work actually is uh, it's a quantity. So based on whatever you would like to achieve, you can calculate this part, and that means it's equal to this part, which means it's required to perform that much work, basically. Now, again, how is your business? Longer arm, uh, weaker force, shorter arm, stronger force, whatever, as long as the work is performed. And that's why it's very important characteristic in mechanics, the, the work. Now, obviously, we will gradually introduce the concept of energy, and work is basically kind of a very much related to the concept of energy. Uh, but that will be in the next lectures. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>